Squad, my name is Kara Fire, and welcome to Kona Chop Shop, a roguelike I'm going to be having a look at today and reviewing for you. So let's get into it. If you're not sure whether to buy it or not, if you're a Conan fan but you don't know about this game, or perhaps you've just come across it and you're unsure if you want to buy it because you like road likes and stuff like that, well, this video is going to be for you or even if you're just curious. So I'm going to say, first of all, the art style is really nice. It's really charming, it does suit, and it also kind of respects the Conan kind of little story theme there going on there, the universe and stuff like that. It's very complimentary. It is a bit different from the usual kind of things you see, like your Conan Exiles and stuff like that. But it's nice and different. It's a nice little spin on it. I also like the pricing of the game. It feels just right for what's offered there on the table. It's also a really fun game to go through that is very light-hearted and nice to pick up for an hour in the evening and smash some mobs with some friends or on your own or with some randoms on the internet. It does have a quite a lot of charming properties about this game, however it also has a few very frustrating parts in this game, as I do find this game quite grindy, but I'll get into that very soon. I suppose one of my first picks at it would be its release time on it, it's a very peculiar time to release a game, because you have things like Elden Ring and Lost Ark coming out and it just didn't hit really. There wasn't really any hi like hype built up for this game or anything like that. So it does feel like after a couple of months or so, even in a month, trying to find parties in public lobbies is probably going to be a bit of a bum to do when you come to this kind of thing. Because it was not very well advertised here, I'm not going to lie. I do Conan content regularly. And it just didn't hit the same. Maybe that's because it is very different. Or maybe that's because the lack of advertising or the inconsistencies earlier in the year with the release time. They did go very silent for a very long time on this game. Which led a lot of people to believe that this game wasn't going to be a thing. And feel like they lost a lot of support and hype for the game. Um, and that does tend to happen when you go silent with games like this. Uh, you lose your audience and stuff and it does feel kind of like this is the case here when it comes to Conan Chop Chop. So if you're looking for people to play with this, uh, it might be worth picking up in like a package or something with some friends you already know. But if you're someone that's a solo, then it's going to be a bit more of a grind fist. I'm not going to lie. Um, it will be that way. But yeah. When I play this game, I definitely get the vibe they're trying to go for something similar to how Vampire Survivors are, but they seem to just miss out on the rewarding part of that game. AK, in Vampire Survivors, the game you play through levels, if you die you have to start over again and that's just how Chop Chop is as well. So there are no checkpoints, if you die you lose everything minus your steel fire. And it's kind of similar in Vampire Survivors, but you get to keep your coins and your upgrades and stuff like that. So, as you go through Vampire Survivors, uh, you receive items and it just makes you feel more powerful and powerful, which gives you this massive hit of dopamine, making you want to play more. The currency you can use to boost upgrades in the menu, you can use on all characters and it carries across the game. Also in this game you unlock more things as you go through, making it exciting to continue onwards and finish the game or do most of its achievements. With Chop Chop though you just don't get that hit of dopamine unless it's like the first time you've killed the boss or something. And I think the problem here is because their system is based on random rolls, you need to grind to get more steel fire to unlock more slots in the shop. If you buy all the charms, your shop upgrades, and then you'll get two times to get a random charm. Which means you might not even get the one you want, or you might just get a bunch of them that are completely useless to you and your build. And you need to keep upgrading and buying charms to unlock more slots, aka more chances to get your favourite charms. I feel like if they removed the randomness of this or did the system slightly differently here, it'd be a more satisfying experience than just an RNG cesspool. If you get a decent charms, uh, you know, it's nice, but love the fact of the time, uh, well, these slots are probably going to be filled with things you don't really want. And of course, the more charms you buy, the more random ones you get that you might not want added to your build. So 
you're just like filling the slots that you're now unlocking with just more crap you don't want so it's just really frustrating because after or not in roles uh, or just gameplay you might not get the charms that you want and you like using and you'll get ones that just don't go with your build at all that you don't really want to use so with this kind of thing here charms are really important because they like your power-ups and everything they are what make you be able to beat bosses and progress in the game uh, at, at a better rate and have a fun time that's your fun charms are your fun okay um that's like your random things like you could have a chicken following you or you can smash things with a poison sword which is really good for solo or you can have a slime following you that wears different hats or you can have a charm upgrade for holding more meat on you so if you die a lot then this is probably a great charm for you or a charm that you dodge and uh, explosive little uh, armor stand comes out and stuff when you dodge and that's really cool it's just so sad that when you do a run it's so frustrating you can't get the upgrades that you want which means is you might as well just wipe the run and then it's just ugh because you have to do it all over again and get the money to buy these charms and you might not necessarily have the money to buy the charms by the time you reach a shop because you might have to buy some meat to prioritize your health and that is also a really annoying system maybe if you got health differently if it was just picking up health out of mobs or something like that or pots and barrels um, instead of buying the meat currency, maybe you'd have more to spend on charms and stuff like that. When you get further into the game, that's not so much of a problem, but in the beginning it definitely is a huge problem. Especially if you're not very good at dodging, or you get caught in a very, uh, well, unfortunate situation. <laughs> Which could totally happen in games like this, you know, that's just natural, it's just called being human, right? You might just say get good, but hey, it happens, man. <laughs> but yeah, that's just kind of my thoughts on it. I don't think the system's very well thought through when it does come to this game in the ways of it's not satisfying enough to play. Like, it's just, it doesn't have the same hit that, you know, a two pound, one pound game like Vampire Survivors has that I can go and pick up for a fraction of the price, you know? So that is definitely a thing maybe they could do something where they add more random things you find out in the world or slightly adjust the shop or skill point shop or how other things work because i don't know just how it is right now i'm not really motivated to play any more than i have done um you could argue skill points would be your consistent factor that fills the void that i'm kind of making a debate about but no it's not quite it doesn't quite do it for me <laughs> it requires quite a bit of grind in the first place to receive skill points like you know you have to go through the levels to level up to get skill points because that's how you're going to get skill points and the more you fill out the more expensive it gets so you'll start off with like spending one skill point then it will ask for two and then it jumps straight to five and then a lot of things want five and it's just like it's too much <laughs> It gets pretty pricey in the early stages as well. Uh, you know, you're adding skill points up on your character and they make slight price adjustments here and there for them. I've made some upgrades to my character, but I just feel like I haven't got anywhere with it. Like I'm not really getting, I'm not getting that feeling of, you know, I'm feeling awesome and I want to play more because I'm unlocking these really cool skills out of my character that are really cool. It's just not, <laughs> which makes me kind of sad, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but yeah, that's just how I kind of feel when it comes to this game here. Like, it's a good little pickup. It will satisfy people that are really casual about it. But if you want to get any further into it uh, than that, than just casual or anything like that, it's just not going to hit that. It's not going to hit that for you. Like... You just say, <laughs> you don't hear from me anyway. Let's just put it that way. And that will be my honest opinion on this one. For someone that loves the Conan franchise and all of that, it just don't hit the same. <laughs> or it don't hit the same with other roguelikes. Because I do like other roguelikes, like I'm mentioning, like Vampire Survivors, that's a really good one. Um, I had a lot of fun there. Like, I did a five-hour stream on it because it kept, 
you know, egging me on, like, I want to keep going, I want to keep going, you know, and it just feels like they're missing something here that makes me want to do that. I feel like with Rogue, like, it needs that kind of thing going on there that uh, makes you want to keep progressing and stuff like that. But they're just missing something. It's so frustrating. <laughs> would I recommend this game? Yeah, I would recommend it. But I feel like, yeah, if you're anything more than casual uh, when you play these kind of games, if you're going to play it for more than one to two hours at a night, or you want to play, or you want to, you know, surpass all the bosses and get really far, then I would say maybe just think about it and look at a few more reviews and stuff like that. Or take my words into consideration. <laughs> But yeah, anyway, that's my kind of thoughts and feelings on the game, my kind of review. Um, let me know if you do pick it up and what you feel about it and stuff. But yeah, that's kind of my thoughts anyway. Thank you for watching. I love you and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.